Item A, urgency ordinance to authorize the city manager to issue rules for street events without permits. And um, so I'd like to recognize Andrew Greenwood, Chief of Police. Um, establish uh, rules for street events without permits. This arises out of our concerns for uh, community safety in this upcoming weekend on uh, Sunday, August 5th. We're concerned about uh, a pair of unplanned events to uh, essentially sort of de-escalate by ensuring that, that uh, implements of riot and weapons are not brought into a certain area in our city. Hi, my name is Reiko. I represent Revolution Books. Um, holding this meeting to enact an ordinance is completely wrong and misses the point entirely. Once again, pro-Trump fascists say they're going to stage a no to Marxism event in Berkeley. When these fascists go after Marxism, they're taking a page straight out of Hitler's playbook. They hate revolution books because of the liberating revolution we bring, the new communism. That's what we're all about. And everyone who refuses to accept a fascist America, anyone should want to throw this anti-communist communism right back in their face with a proud yes to Marxism. We should all stand up against this fascist attack on August 5th and make Berkeley a fascist free zone. And this building should have a banner 100 feet high on it saying that. That should be what the city council does. That should be the stand that the mayor takes. The point is, these fascists are the brown shirts of the Trump regime. And they're coming to your town to bully and intimidate and loudly promote genocidal white supremacy. Our responsibility is, as speakers have said, Thank to you. oppose them, to tell them to get out of Berkeley, out of the White House, and off the planet. If you can please we have an opportunity comments. here to act, Mayor, Thank you. to inspire millions, to reject Thank fascism, Thank you very much. and to drive Next out speaker, the regime. Please. For the record, that Berkeley is not a liberal city. Berkeley has never been based on free speech. Berkeley was founded by racist people who killed the native people who are living here. Nothing has changed, except we have higher rents. The only tactics that work with white nationalists are three-prong, expose, oppose, and confront. And if you try to pass this ordinance, all you're going to do is hamstring vulnerable people that you already ignore and disenfranchise when they attempt to defend themselves. You're going to leave them at the mercy of the police who have been shown to be colluding with the white nationalists? Oh if this man wants it, Berkeley shouldn't. Thank you. Any other speakers on this item? Come forward. Of the neo-Nazis, the proto-fascists coming to our town is that it equates those people with the people who are opposed to them. And that's just wrong. The anti-fascists didn't say they were going to have a demonstration in Berkeley. The fascists said they were coming. We are opposed to people who come to our town to spout um, fascistic ideas and to divide our community. We don't want those people here. The chief's presentation was this even-handed you know, thing about everybody's bad. Well, everybody isn't bad. And I, I, re and I think the city needs to reject that notion. Um, it has unfortunately become the testing ground for white nationalist groups and right-wing groups to see how far they can go in terms of the police stopping them. And it makes it harder for us to share the message that we should all be anti-fascist and we should all be anti-racist if it becomes criminalized. Um, I have never worn a mask before, but I do have multiple friends that have. And I know that it's especially important for our LGBTQ community because their faces have been put up on the internet by the alt-right, and that is something that you cannot protect them from. This is an opportunity for Berkeley to present itself as sort of a unified front against these people coming in from outside trying to spread ideologies of genocide and violence and hatred. Um, and instead of helping to present that kind of a stance, it puts protesters, like the people who put their lives on the line in Charlottesville, in a doubly vulnerable position where not only are they having to confront white supremacist violence, but they're also having to confront the violence of the city of Berkeley itself in the form of the police who will target them for these things. Southern Poverty Law Center has found that these groups are the biggest threat to national security 
They're the biggest threat to our security, whether you're black, Jewish, otherwise, anyone. We are very much at risk for these individuals. I follow them on social media, and I've seen, if anyone's read their posts, they're quite frightening. But I think it's important to acknowledge that there were people um, on August 27th and in people at previous events last year that w did not intend uh, to be peaceful, that came with weapons intent on committing violence against um, individuals in our community. That is the purpose of this ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance, which the council adopted last year, and which we, are, we will be reauthorizing this evening, is to give our police department the power to confiscate weapons so that we can keep our community safe. Councilor Davila, would you like to speak to this item? Um, Antifa was, last year was protecting uh, our citizens from the white supremacists and fascists. Councilmember Davila? No. Councilmember Bartlett? Yes. Yes. Drosty? Yes. Mayor Aragin? Yes. Okay, motion carries. The ordinance is in effect. Thank you. Fantastic. Please clap. Both sides. Subscribe to very fake news.